Right, here we go. Um, I haven't done any painting for a few days. I um, don't know what's been the matter with me. I've just not been in a painting frame of mind. So anyway, um, I've got my oils out today. They're, I'm using Georgian oils. They're um, student quality, but they're exceptionally good. Um, so... Without any further ado, let's get on and do some work because my last videos have been far too long. So, this is loosely based on um, a place where I walk the dogs, Marford Quarry. It's, um, it's not really like this at all. I'm not using a photograph. What... Um, the other day I went out with the dogs and there was some glorious sunshine and there's these folds in the land um, which I'll abstract quite a bit um, and because in reality there's quarries and all sorts of things over there it's not particularly pretty um, but there's woods there, bushes here few trees standing up but what I really liked was there was the sun was from that side and there was lovely shadows coming across the path um, I did look at a few photographs but they've all got dogs in them so uh, I'll do without um, I'm going to start off just putting in um, a terpsy wash for the sky and I'm using um, a Krilla brush which is actually for acrylics but I won't tell anyone if you won't. Um, mix in some pure terps, not white spirit, pure terps onto the uh, palette. I'm using a huge great sheet of glass for a palette so I can't actually hold it up by the side. But um, I'll tell you what I'm doing even if I can't show you. Now I've got titanium white and ultramarine blue and I'm just going to scribble in some sky and I say this is thinned with just pure turps so it will dry quite quickly I've been faffing around with um, easels and things. My problem with my studio is it's tiny. And um, if I use my big studio easel, there's no room to move, which is a pity. Um, but I'm trying to improvise a bit. So I've got... It's actually a sketching easel, metal, I think it's Dale Rowney, I'm not sure. Um, but it's reasonably sturdy and I've got it at full spread and I put this big piece of wood at the back of it which um, keeps it a bit more steady. And um, it's the sort of thing I do when I'm not painting. I faff. So if it's rattling a bit, I'm sorry. a glorious sunny day which <laughs> you can tell it was a couple of weeks ago it's been snowing since then it's just before Easter we had some glorious weather um, really warm t-shirt weather and then about two days later it started snowing that 
is the price you pay for living amongst the glorious Welsh countryside. You get Welsh weather as well. I'm going to add a touch of raw umber into this mix which makes a lovely grey sort of cloudy colour. I'm using this brush because it's um, a nylon one, it'll take an awful lot of stick, um, but it's relatively soft and I don't want to be leaving brush strokes in this. I want this to be sort of sky in the background. Painted straight through the trees because I'll put them in afterwards. They're not going to go. When I draw onto a panel that I'm painting on in oils, it's not a. I'm not doing paint by numbers, I'm doing roughly where the composition is going to be. I said it loads of times, painting is organic. Paintings just grow. Right, so that's that. Now I'm going to use a bristle brush that's um, a Rosebury & Co. Uh, Filbert number 4. If anyone's interested. Filbert is like a flat but it's got that curvy edge. Uh, now into this mix of blue that I used for the sky. I'm putting a tiny touch of alizarin. And a bit more of the raw umber touch more ultramarine touch more white so I want this to be my furthest hills and now we've got a sort of grey purple Now, bringing this further forward, I've still got the grey colour, I'm putting into it some yellow ochre around the edges and touch more of the green, not the green, the blue, to make a greener colour, but I still don't want it bright. 
this is where the bright stuff's going to be. This is still a little bit further off. It's still very turpsy. It will still dry very quickly. But I'm, uh, I'm going to be painting over all of this. It's just to nail down some sort of idea of where things are going in my head. It's almost like a tonal underpainting, but I'm keeping it more or less the right colours. And as I'm adding paint to it, I'm not adding any more um, turps. So the paint's getting thicker. It's still thin, but there's, it's not so liquid. So there we've got that. Got some tissue. Don't know where to put that. Where I can still get at it. Okay, that's that done. Now going to be coming into here and going to add a little touch of cadmium yellow into that this side pretty much the same colour cadmium ultramarine touch of yellow ochre Now that bit, a little bit more yellow. And here, I'm going to much thicker yellow, some white. Touch of the blue. I'm going to add a little bit of Terra Vert in there because there's 
shadows and that going on. It's going to be a big bush in the foreground. Or some twiggy bits at the bottom of the tree. The surface I'm using, by the way, is 3mm um, MDF, which was sealed with PVA. And then onto that, I glued a piece of um, thin canvas. And then it's sandwiched between a few more layers of PVA. And then it's got a very light coat of um, acrylic raw umber no not yeah I think it's raw umber and white I'm not sure um, I tend to do these in lumps not lumps in batches I'm never sure exactly what color I've primed them in. So there we've got some distanty bits. Some closey up bits. I think I'll put some more light coming across there. So I'm not happy with that shape. Now, for the path, I'm going to use some light red mixed into that white yellow ochre colour that's that I'm um, just so I'll realize or remember where things are going I'm just going to mix up a little bluey color again very thin just want to see how I'm going to make that land fall and you use the shadows A 
and that's what gives shape to the land. I'll do some work with brush strokes on it as well which will help but basically now it looks as if it's moving somewhere. Right, okay. I'm gonna yeah that's more or less dry now have a quick look at what I'm doing now I'm going to clean off the palette I don't want all this terpsy paint getting into the rest just while that dries up a bit more all I'm doing is wiping it off with <coughs> I was gonna say a painty rag but it's not don't use painty rags anymore I use kitchen roll You're probably getting a bit of an earthquake there. Right, okay, now. I'm going to use a much bigger brush. It's another Rosemary & Co. Um, don't know what number that is. It's six, it's a long bristled flat. Lovely brush. All part of my Christmas present from my lovely daughters. I'm using a little bit of poppy oil and a touch of liquid to speed up the drying a bit. I'm going to go in and do the sky proper. I've mixed up on my palette a big glob of titanium white tiny touch of the ultramarine into it Because I've done this terpsy stuff underneath, I can scribble on top of it and it's still blue underneath it. Now into that, a bit more of the blue, a bit too much blue, some of the raw umber, ultramarine blue and raw umber make a lovely cloudy grey colour. Scribbling this on. Remember, the sun's coming, it's shining over there, so any shadows on the clouds will be on this side. underneath touch of a lizard in into that grey colour
and it's some fairly angry looking clouds on this side. Fade them away a bit into the distance. Clean that brush off a little bit. More haste, less speed, as my mother always used to say. Faff about and you knock your brush on the floor. Now that's the reason I've cleaned the brush to get these nice clean whites in. I'm trying to get a little bit of movement into the sky. A hint of a breeze scudding the clouds about. I want there's going to be quite a lot going on in the rest of this picture so I don't want too much in the sky it's not a sky painting it's a landscape painting but I want enough in the sky to set the scene as it were Right, okay, I'm going to call that quits. And... I'm going to leave that sit 
for a second, well, 10 minutes or so. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to blend in those bits of cloud there. in my little badger fan which I really hope isn't made out of badger fur it looks as if it might be right okay I'm going to turn the video off for 10 minutes and then I shall come back and do a bit more detail. Right, back again. Um, I sat here for a little while, had a look at it, see what I'm doing. And uh, I might go back into the sky a bit later on, but I'm going to start off coming forward from the, um, from the horizon so I'm still using my rosemary and co bristle brushes um, but I'm going to use a palette knife a little one to mix up some color um, that was ultramarine blue white with a touch of raw umber um, I'm going to use the same colors but I'm going to mix them a bit stronger or a bit more strongly is that a word I don't know I taught English for donkey's years I've forgotten how to speak right so I've got a sort of purple put some of the brown in And there we go. Use some of that. Now because the light's coming from that direction, I'm going to need a little bit of shadow on the other side, so I'm mixing a slightly darker bit. So there we've got that and touch of white into the same colour. little ridges to make it look a bit more real very little in the way of contrast here between the lights and the darks 
because more contrast will make it look as if it's coming forward. Okay, now I'm going to go on to that bit. Yellow ochre. Um, I'm going to put the Terra Vert in there. Lazy, but it's a very good mixing green. Again, touch of white into that. may have noticed I'm mixing on the paper there. Put the mid-tone in first and then add your lights and darks to it. I want a fairly hard edge where the path goes over this hill. Right now we're coming to these trees, that one's slightly further away, so I'm using the grey colour, I'm mixing into it some terra vert. Touch of the blue. shadows underneath not sure whether it's an underneath or not that but um, I'm still deciding what time of year I think I'll make it a springy sort of picture because it is springy Mixing a touch of burnt umber into the green. Cleaning most of the paint off the brush. I'm just going to flick the edges.
I'm going to mix some lemon yellow touch of white to get that acidy spring green just where the sun is catching these things right okay leave that for now we'll do these ones over here um not going to have those quite so bright and cheerful a lot further behind these trees I mean don't mean further back I mean uh, further behind in their development Yes. And some lights and darks into that so they're not one lump. More dark over here. Now, I'm just going to use, no it's not working, not sharp enough. just a few little tree trunks same over there now this is going to be a gorse bush and Terravert ultramarine touch of cadmium uh, 
uh, very dark underneath it. And I'm doing the flowers with pure cadmium because they practically are. There, now we've got my gorse bush. Now I'm going to put the sun coming down there I need to mix up a really nice bright green cadmium taravert No, a bit more terrible rather. Now I've got a really mad green into that tiny touch of raw umber. A tiny touch of light red because that will kill it a bit. There, that's better. Now it's that colour. me little brush clean it off Just got on the brush, I've got some lemon yellow and titanium white. I'm just going to put a light stripe. Okay, now on that side, pretty much the same colour, slightly less intensity.
little bit of white into there knock it back a little bit same trick as before Right, we're getting somewhere. Now... Whoops, another earthquake. I'm going to start putting these trees in. And that is number six, yeah, number six, bristle rigger. I'm using almost all rosemary and co brushes in this because they're lovely. I'm mixing a nice oily mix of umber. And blue. I'm going to put a tiny touch of Payne's grey into that to darken it up. Now I'm going to start putting in the trees. Now I'm going to put some light on the other side, mix some yellow ochre into that browny colour, touch of white.
now. Mix up a nice dark colour. I'm going to use Payne's Grey into that. Add some light red. Some ultramarine. I should have a nice contrasty dark colour there to do the shadowy sides of the trees with. Right, we've got some trees. Now I'm going to use, if I can find it, yeah. This is one of my favourite brushes. It's um, an SAA, SAA imitation sable and it's a lovely brush. They're not even particularly expensive and they're tough as old boots. I use these, I've got three and sometimes they get mixed up but I use one for oils, one for watercolour and one for acrylics and um, as I say they take all sorts of hammer. One of the mistakes which I find myself still making every now and again is to put branches coming off like the rungs in a ladder and they don't. They come out here, there and everywhere.
Right, now. While I've got this little brush and some dark colours, I'm going to flick in some more darks the base of these trees Now, ultramarine blue into my grassy colour, touch of the paint's grey, touch of the light red, touch of the alizarin, a bit more of the blue. Now, that out because it's not coming from anywhere in particular Right, getting somewhere. Going back to this little fan brush and I'm going to use it fairly dry. I'm just going to bash it.
Now, got lots of the light colour. <laughs> Look at the state. I'm a messy pup, a mucky pup. E, you are a mucky kid. Now some darks. Right, now into that, get my little rigger again. I'm going to tie in some more branches. Put some more darks here and there. I've gone quiet because I'm thinking. And I'm a bloke. So I can't think and do at the same time. Because it's doing, it's, what is it, multitasking, that's what it is. Right, I'm going to stop for a minute, well, more than a minute, a um, few minutes, and I'm going to have a little look 
at what's done and what needs to be done. It's reinstating some of these lines. Okay, I'm going to leave that, go away, come back. Right, um, I'm back again and I'm going to be fairly drastic now. Um, I've had a good hard look at this and it's not how I want it to be. Uh, and I realised it's because I put too much grass in here. It doesn't look anything like what I wanted it to look like. Um, because I've turned it into some um, sheep pasture or something which isn't. So I'm going to take a lot of this green out. doesn't look a lot different but I'm taking the loose stuff off the top and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with more of the light red and umber stuff because I want it to be more like the place is and that is much bolder, a bit like me. And there is grass, but it's more sparse, sparse grass. It's all too pastoral. Pastoral, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't look real. It looks like some made-up pretend place. See, it looks better already. Well, I think it looks better already. Just getting some of that green out. This is one of the wonderful things about oil paints. They are completely and utterly forgiving. Yellow ochre. I need to squeeze out some more white because I've used rather a lot of white. And I'm going to go in more with umbers and lights and darks into that.
it looks more real, doesn't it, somehow? Well, I think it does. I think it's because I put all the lights and brightnesses in there. Yeah, I'm starting to like it now. I didn't like it before. Yeah, I like that much better. Now I want some stuff going on down there. Um, use the umbers and touch of blue and I'm going to Put some scrubby stuff growing up around here.
what I'm mixing there is I'll show you that's pure terra vert and into it I'm mixing yellow ochre I do want some green there, but I don't want this brightness. That's nearly done now. Right, now then, that one's a bit stiffer, um, it's a bigger badger fan and hopefully with this I'm going to be able to, this rough ground at the base of the trees, I need 
some more glue. And there we have it, some more blue. Uh, it's back to my little square brush. The blue and the terra vert. Okay, now I've still got this square ended brush and mix up a really dark dark. And remember I did these with a rigger. All I'm going to do now is go back in with very dark paint and just use the blade of the brush put more darks in
yes that looks a lot better already just going to go into some of these shadows Now I'm going back to my little brush, just put some finishing touches to the shadows, I'm very oily now, this is what it means by fat over lean, use lots of oil on the top layer. So there, more splodgy bits that's another technical term splodgy bits over there I think it's going to be finished light red yellow ochre touch white I want this sort of dancing sunlight feel
Yes, I'm going to leave that. I think. Do I need a little bit of dark up there? Tiny little bit darker. That'll do. I'm fiddling. Okay. Off we go and call that more or less finished. Spring sunshine. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. It was supposed to be a short one this time, but I'm afraid... It's turned out long again. <laughs>